so today I am doing a video on the get down again because I never finished doing my get down video reviews so this is going to be the continuation of my get down video reviews slash more of my opinion on the get down now I was saying what I didn't get to say last time in um, 13 reasons why the get down was cancelled is another reason like this is just my opinion but another reason I didn't really like some of the plots of the show is because every five seconds there was either a fresh scene or cuss words and that does not make a show decent like I said. That really can drag a show that could have been 10 out of 10 to a 0, 0 out of 0 because it can make a show hideous in five seconds especially if the cuss words don't even fit the context in which they are being used because I feel like if you're gonna say a cuss word it has to fit the context there has to be a reason like don't just go around saying cuss words for no reason because what are you doing? Every single word does not have to be a cuss word. So I feel like that's another reason why I was like no to this show. And then one last reason why I think it got cancelled is because they were trying to mix reality and fantasy and history and fact and fiction. Babies on fire and all the laughing boys are bitching waiting for photos. I did like I did like one thing I liked a couple of things but not every single thing most of it I didn't like but one thing I liked about it was Dizzy's outfits his outfits his character who's probably my favorite character on the show so Dizzy was a good character in my opinion and I liked his outfits and whatever so that's that so that's the rest of my mini opinion on the get down getting canceled and we're gonna get right into the episodes four and five reviews right now Where we left off in episode three is there was a blackout and let's move this a little. There was a blackout and basically everything went to trash and everybody was crying in the dirt like why, 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 why? So that's where we basically start off in episode four. And we see um see we see Mylene. Mylene, Mylene, whatever you wanna call her. And we see her and Papa Forte, which is her uncle. You need a medical attention, Senor Rivera here. Because he's like with the city council and he keeps trying to get funding to build a housing project and all that. He tries to get funding to build a thing within the city and she's with him, she's with her friend and they're just talking blah 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 blah. He asks her, he asks her if she likes Zeke or not. And she's like, oh no, I don't like him like that one, one, one. But her friend is like, yeah, right, blah, 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 blah. But this kid, uh, Ezekiel, he's the one that used to, to, to play the piano in the church. See? The skinny, quiet one with this. You like him? See. Oh, I mean, like that? No. I don't know. Then, continuing along, continuing along, they go into the little thing and they go shopping. And she sees Shaolin, and he's like, you're this and this and this. And she's like, whatever, Zeke is never going to be with you because you're stupid and you're a criminal, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you think Zeke is not a criminal too? And she's like, he would never do that, blah, blah, blah. He's pure, he's holy, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, no, he's not, but I'm kidding. Ezekiel would never steal. You sure? Everybody here is stealing. Even you. So continuing along, continuing along. We get to um, Ra Ra and Boo. I don't know if Dizzy is with them, I don't think he is, but they eventually decide that they have to tell um, Shaolin about the Grandmaster Flash tape and they have to tell um, their parents that the people with Grandmaster Flash are the ones that broke up their store because they get to their mom and their mom is crying in the dirt being like, after all these years we've been in this town, blah, 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 blah. I couldn't believe that they would do this. I wouldn't think that anybody would do this to us. Been shop here for 10 years. 10 years. This is just wrong, boo. We're a part of this community. And this is how they treat us. And then, so eventually, after seeing their mom being like, why, 
they go and get the courage to tell her that they're the ones that caused this to happen. And their dad is like, are you kidding me? And he's like, I'm going to do this and that to you. But she's like, no, no, no. At least they're being honest. At least they told us the truth. I love my children, blah, 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 blah. So continue along, continue along, continue along. Well, eventually we get to this part where the boys that are like a part of Grandmaster Flash's thing tell him about the bootleg tapes. And I said, why is this boy acting worse than Lisa in The Omega Man? Why is he acting like her? They had a fake rig set up, pretending to scratch and spin, charging at the door. Fools was falling for it too, was straight up blasting me, son, word up. I want you to turn, I'll turn you on or off, up or around, I'll turn you, now cool it. Now put your hands out, out, way out, about shoulder, I like to go crucify you, baby. This is so annoying, seriously. When they make people talk like that, I'm like, did anybody even ever actually talk like that? This is so hideous. Like, seriously, just bye. So, um, they're telling Flash this and this and this. But the thing is, the whole time, um, Shaolin didn't know they had a fake tape. They didn't, he didn't know that the people came and messed up their mom's store. He didn't know none of that stuff. So he was at the swap meet. And I think Zeke shows up eventually. Well, no. These boys called the Notorious Three show up. And they're like, you're fake. All of you are fake. Ha ha, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, what are they talking about? And they're like, you don't even know. And they're like, look at them. They didn't even tell their main man, blah, 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 that they did this and this and this. Faking a fuck like that. Disrespecting the art form. Wait, what? Disrespecting the Yeah, fuck? disrespecting your own grandmaster. Wait a second. Yeah, disrespecting like... the grandmaster. <laughs> grandmaster Flash is family to me. And he's like, how could you do this to me? You know this is my life, blah, blah, blah. So he runs off trying to tell Flash that he would never, he would this, 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 this. And Flash is like, whatever. So he basically from this point promises Flash that he's going to get this part and part five are like mixed together because I probably forgot some parts, but I'm just mixing them together. So whatever. If it's parts from four, parts from five mixed together, whatever, whatever. And the thing is, in my opinion, episodes four and five are really, really boring compared to some of the other episodes that are less boring. So anyways, continue along, continue along. Eventually, Dizzy meets Thor in episode four. I think he meets him in episode four. So they meet because they're running from the police, but eventually they meet up and they're like, oh my gosh, and they both tell each other what they do, and they're like, one, one, one. It's the pigs! Hey, you! Hey, you! Hold it right there! You know the right? You know who you are! You got this! Punk ass, good for nothing! Let me work some you right, okay? Come here, take my hand. While all this is going on, Mylene has her two friends and she's trying to get the record producer man to write her a song. But the problem is the record producer man has his own issues and it's taking too long to write the song. Nina, I can't. I have to go with Zeke to his internship interview with my deal today. And there's no way he's not going to be asking about the song, which he's paying for. So I'm going to lie to him again and tell him everything's great, everything's fine, the song is great, which it clearly ain't. Go on, your man, I think Jack is at the guy on what if my Theo finds out? So, continuing on, continuing on. So, um, Marlene takes Zeke with her, and she's like, you're gonna do good because Papa Fuerte had promised Zeke that he could get him an internship, whatever, whatever. Because the lady from, um, his school, their teacher was talking to Zeke's aunt about how he has so much potential, blah, 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 blah. He could be a good candidate for an internship. Do you remember the internship opportunities I told you about? Kind of. Well, this one's downtown through Mr. Fuerte, and you can make connections that can help you with scholarships for colleges. According to Ms. Green, you're a perfect candidate. You're poor, you're from the South Bronx, you're half black, half Puerto Rican, and you're smart. The only thing they might prefer more is if you're a woman. So anyways, continue along, continue along. Zeke and Mylene, Eventually talking to each other, she's like, can you come with me to the place where the man's going to do the song? Um, it would be really, really fun, blah, 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 blah. But he's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. So, but then Shaolin finds them, and he's like, hey, Zeke, you need to come with me to find this um, bootleg Grandmaster Flash tape. And she's like, every single time you do this to me, blah, 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 blah. Shao, hey! Hey, I know you're 
know you don't like him, but he's, he's done good to me. Please. Make it quick. So basically, he has... Zeke is stuck in this life war between Shaolin and Molly. Does he want to go with Shaolin? Does he want to go with Molly? Who knows? Anyways, so basically this whole time he's like choosing between friendship or relationship. But like I said, they still have them acting like they're 45 when they're like 12. So why? But anyways, Marlene is like, you're a raggedy hobo, leave me alone, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, come on, stop acting stupid. And she's like, whatever, I'm leaving, I hate you all. It's a night. Zeke, what about the other night and everything? I never would have thought she'd dumb me like this. Marlene, come on, girl, hey. Yama. So she goes off and she goes to get her two friends. Because our one friend was with her raggedy boyfriend and he was like, hey, we're not done, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, leave me alone. So then she starts talking to her friends because they go to get on the train to go talk to the record producer man or the songwriter. And they're on the train. Marlene is like, you can't keep being with people like that. He's a horrible person, this and this and this. And she's like, you should talk. You're going in the middle of nowhere on a train to meet some man you barely even know. And she's like, okay, then. So she just decides to be quiet. Marlene, please. Stop acting like you're gonna save me. Last time I checked, we, we on this damn train crossing the river to God knows where to help your ass, right? And while all this is going on, we have Dizzy, Rara, and Boo at their mom's store talking to each other, saying how they have to help Shaolin because that's all their life, their friends, blah, 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 blah. And Dizzy is like, no, we shouldn't get involved. And they're like, we thought you were blah 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 talking about rebellion all the time and he's like oh yeah I do but 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 not like that and they're like you can't be a rebel if you don't rebel because he said this so quietly you can't even hear what he said I'm like and I thought you was a rebel I am a rebel but you can't be a rebel if you don't rebel <laughs> I was like what so anyway <laughs> Continue along, continue along. So they eventually, um, Dizzy and his brothers, they're like, okay, we have to do this. We have to help Shallon. So they get themselves together and they're gonna go help. So we get back to Malene. Um, I cannot remember her other friend's name to save my life, but I know it's Malene, Yolanda, and her other friend. <laughs> so they eventually get to the apartment of the man writing the song. But the problem is, he did an overdose and they're like, oh my god, one, one, one. So she helps to get the man back to life. And she's like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. So she gets him back to life. And they're like, see, this is why. Because he was supposed to come to Papa Fuerte with Marlene and show him the song that he wrote for Marlene. But he didn't have the song written, which is why he did the overdose, because he was so dumb with life. But anyways, continuing along. Um, Marlene, her friend, and her other friend, and the man, they get on the train, and they're all like, dang it, he's so stupid, blah, 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 blah. He didn't even write the song. This is trash. This is so stupid. So they're on the train. They're going, they're going, they're going. And they start singing, um, I'll Be There. And I said, the problem is, this, out of all the Michael Jackson slash Jackson 5 songs, this has to be the one I literally hate the most. I always hated this song. Anyways, they sing I'll Be There, I'm like, why must you sing this hideous song? But they sing it anyways. So then the man is like, one, 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 because he's starting to wake up listening to their song. And I will say that this version is actually okay. I don't really like it, but I mean, meh, because I hate the song, but I mean, this version is meh, so. But anyways, and I was saying, the thing is, the more I watch this show, the more I rewatch it, the worse it gets somehow. Like, you know when you watch a show and every time you watch it, it gets better. But this show, the more I watch it, the worse it gets. And I know people are gonna be all triggered in the comments, but it's my opinion, one, one, one. And if you don't like it, so anyways, <laughs> continue along, continue along. Zeke and Shaolin catch the bootlegger. Well, they're about to. 
So they going, they're going, they're going. And Shaolin has a sword that he bought at the swap meet. And Zeke is like, no, what are you doing? Stop it. Because he was going to stab the boy that was making the fake tapes. So he takes the little knife thing, but then Zeke starts making too much noise. So the boy realizes that they're there. He hears them. So what they do is they try to start making fake little dealings. They're like, hey, this and this and this and this and this. Passengers call me Turtle. Turtle? It's Turtle, because I drive my OJ too fast, man. Get it? I don't recognize. Who you with? Touch a class. I hear you got Grandmaster Flash bootleg for sale. You got money? Of course I do, right here. King of Cassettes, right? They call me Lil Zip. Fresh Valor car service at your service. We go from the east to the west, from the west to the east. Lil Zip's car service is the best you'll see. From the and then, Dizzy and his brother show up. And they start doing whatever, but then his brother, Boo, he takes the tape. And the man is like, what the? My associate here and I belong to a socially monitored consortium of older drivers concerned with the ass poor working conditions of the typical Bronx based private high limousine. But also, of course, with the skyrocketing cost of living that's forced a typical older driver to now resort to bootlegging and venerated DJ Kings. What? Then the next thing they cut to is the other man being like, you must not know where you are. And I forgot to mention that Zeke is supposed to be going to the internship, but the thing is, he, um, went with Shaolin instead, so he forgot that he had to be at the internship early in the day. But continuing along, we go back to um, Malin, Papa Fuerte, her friends, and her dad, and her mom, and the man making the song. The man, um, writing the song, couldn't write the song good, and Papa Fuerte was getting more mad at him. And that's where episode four ends. It ends right there. So that's how it ends. So jumping right into episode five. Um, in episode five, we see it's continuing where it left off. We have um, man writing the song, and we have Malene and her mom, her dad, because in episode three, they actually kicked her out, which is why they were shocked when they showed up there and seen her because they kicked her out of their house and they're like, oh my gosh, we see her for the first time in so many weeks. So good to see you at church on Sunday morning. Oh, my Lee. <gasps> so the man is trying to write the song, still struggling, failing at life, blah, 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 blah. And they have Papa Fuerte getting madder and madder at him as the time goes on. But back to um, Zeke Shaolin and all the rest of them. They get the tape and they're talking to DJ Cool Herc. The boy that was bootlegging the tapes tries to say that they were the one doing it and they were like, no, we would never do that, blah, 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 blah. But how you get involved in all this, man? And they were trying to bootleg the show. I was just telling them to stop. Hey, hey, nah, nah. Hey, this dude. Cool it. And basically all this stuff unfolds. And while they're doing that, the man writing the song eventually starts being like, you know that old church song that goes like blah blah blah. So the song starts coming to him and he starts writing the song for Zeke, not Zeke, for Malene and her friends and they become a girl group as the song goes on. And as the song is going on, the little um, altercation between Zeke and Shaolin and the boys saying that they stole the tape and their friends is like happening. So while the song is going, this, this is happening. Because Zeke was like, no, to prove to you that we are real and we can really do our own stuff, he starts rhyming, starts rapping, whatever, whatever. And then at the big boosh bosh ending of their little fight with the man, they shake out his jacket and they be like, see, look how many tapes he took. What do we have here? Hurt. Air him out. out there so they get rid of him and he's like you and the notorious three are gonna battle each other you're gonna do a battle of the bands basically but like a battle of the djs a battle of the music so that's how that happens so continue along continue along continue along we get to malene and yolanda is like oh my gosh 
this is going to be so exciting, so whatever, but so scary. And she's like, no, it's okay, it's fine. Because she was living with Yolanda because her parents kicked her out. And Yolanda is like, it's so sad that you're leaving, blah, 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 blah. The time. I've been living with three stupid boys all my life. <laughs> it was nice to have a sister for a minute. You can miss wearing all your clothes. Oh. <laughs> Zeke is like, oh my gosh, because he forgot that um, he was supposed to go to the internship. So basically he misses his internship opportunity and he's like, dang it, I should have did this and this and this. All my life. And Mr. Guns is in committee meetings for the remainder of the day, so I'm sorry, but you've missed your window of opportunity, right. Mr. Figuero. Right. Right. And um, Dizzy, I forget if it's in the last episode four or episode five, but there was a point where Dizzy had given Thor his book. Well, Thor gave Dizzy his book and he was like, fill my book up, write whatever you want in there, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, man, but what happened to him? He went all city to that Clan of the Dragon Fist joint? Turned ghost, huh? He's still around. He's a DJ now. So that's them, that's how they go, blah, 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 blah. So eventually, continuing along, continuing along, Shaolin brings Grandmaster Flash the fake tapes and the little tape recorder that the boy was using to make the fake tapes. Well, to the King of Cassettes. We tracked him down and took it off. Oops. And we got the tape back, the final bootleg tape. It's my honor to present them both to you, Grandmaster. And so, after he brings them the tapes, Flash is like, let me talk to you and Zeke, blah, 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 blah. Because he brought Zeke with him. And those, so they start talking to Flash. And he's like, this and this and this. And tells them what they need to do, basically, to go forward in their journey. And he's like, you have a battle coming up, don't you? And he's like, yes. And he's like, well, you need to do this and this and this to prepare for your battle. And he was like, you are accepted again. And he calls him Grasshopper and Snap. So basically, it's all good. So continue along, continue along, continue along. Zeke, like I said, missed his internship chance, so he goes home and the teacher and his aunt are mad at him. They're like, see, this is why. You're going to be a failure just like every other one of these wretched kids that doesn't care about anything. That I know who I am, and right now, y'all pushing me to be who you want me to be, and nobody's asking what I want to be. I mean, who says I even want to go to college? <laughs> Hold up. Was it you who told Papa Fuerte you wanted the internship? So because of that, he decides to go back with the lady and he talks to the lady at the um, place where he's going to internship with the man and she's like, well, he's not going to be here, he has stuff to do. And he's like, I'll wait. So he waits there basically all day, whatever, whatever. And it comes to the end of the day and the lady almost says the man's name, which is how she messed herself up because she's like, Mr. Blah. And then he's like, oh, really? So he goes to the man and he talks to the man. And he basically convinces the man to let him come and do the internship. The man's like, okay, whatever. Mr. Guns is not available. It's okay, I'll wait. Six and a half hours late. Good night, Janet. Good evening, Mr. Guns. So continue along, continue along. Basically, Zeke, Shaolin, and Dizzy, and all the rest of them basically have to get together. I'm skipping most of episode five because it's not really relevant. It's kind of boring. So they all get together and they're all trying to do, trying to practice whatever to get their um, sound together basically for their rap battle or their DJ battle or whatever battle they're going to do. They're trying to get it together. So um, Ra Ra suggests that Zeke should write everybody a rap or a rhyme and that they should all do them. And he's like, you can't. Shaolin is like, you're a horrendous rapper, and he's like, no, I'm not, I can rap, if Zeke writes it, and he's like, okay, blah, 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 so eventually they're all eating together, and Shaolin basically agrees to let Zeke write a rap for everybody, and let everybody become, um, a part of the group, because what, um, Grandmaster Flash told him was you have to trust your wings, and your wings are all your friends, and you have to trust them all, so eventually, continuing along, continuing along, they get to a part where they're all practicing, and... They eventually do the Love You Say by the Jackson 5, and I said the only problem with that is, yet again, they did that in the New Edition movie, and the New Edition movie version was better. Oh, 
So everybody does their chance to get their raps and blah 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 blah. So then eventually, eventually, going along, going along, because I'm skipping most of episode five, whatever. Going along, going along. They're on a roof, they're like, we're good, we have the song together, blah 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 blah. But the thing is, before this happened, it might be before, it might be after, Marlene's song with her friends had officially become a record. And she showed it to um Z and um Shaolin is like, this is trash. And I'm like Thank you! So Buddy's like, this song is trash. So he was like, this song is trash. And, um, but then it gets to the breakdown, slash the get down part, and he's like, oh my gosh, this part could be useful in our little battle. And she's like, ah, how dare you get away from me. Stop trying to use my album. You're scratching it. You're ruining it. And Zeke is like, no, he's not going to ruin it. And she's like, yes, he is. So she snatches the album back. She runs outside. She's like, this and this and this. He's ruining my album, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, no, he's... Zeke is like, no, he's not ruining it. Can I please just have one? Blah, 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 blah. So she's a thirsty hobo, so she's like, okay, fine. So yo, you still hey, hey, look, I'm not hurting hey, the record. Hey, yo, hey, yo okay. this is a it's serious okay. joint. Like, it's good, it's I'm good. not hurting it's the good. record. Marlene, Books, please get that record. Marlene, what you think I'm doing? I gotta get back in there and practice. Can I please get that record? Sure. And I think that's bef either before or after the part they get on the roof, before or after the part where they discover that um, their other little friends have some talent. I don't know if it's before, if it's after, whatever, nobody cares. So eventually there's a part where they're on the roof, they're all talking, and Dizzy is like, well, there was a part where Dizzy went to his other graffiti friends and was like, has anybody seen Thor? And they're like, Nope, oh well. So he goes in the little tunnels looking for him and he's like, oh well. So continue along, continue along. He goes back on the roof with all his friends. And they're all talking, they're like, it was a good day, blah, 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 blah. And um, he's like, Thor, and everybody's like, who's Thor? And he's just like, he's just a basic obo, nobody cares. Thor. Who's Thor? Just this white boy. He got style. So, um, eventually Boo goes off by himself and he finds this boy from the little warlord people and they're all like, oh my gosh, so they all jump on him and that's where episode five ends. You sure it's him? Yeah, it's him. Yeah. Rise and shine, Napoleon. Derp -derp. And if anybody questions why I continue to make get down videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next Crusty Dusty video.